Good morning. Good morning. Our processional hymn this morning, despite the secretary's mishaps, is 522. Glorious things of thee are spoken.
Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all those who, with hearty repentance and true faith, turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray together the collect of the day. O God, the fountain of life, to the humanity parched with thirst, you offer the living water that springs from the rock, our Savior Jesus Christ. Stir up within your people the gift of the Holy Spirit, that we may profess our faith with freshness and announce with joy the wonder of your love. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from the book of Exodus. From the wilderness of sin, the whole congregation of Israelites journeyed by stages, as the Lord commanded. They camped at Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. The people quarreled with Moses and said, Give us water to drink. Moses said to them, Why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? But the people thirsted there for water. And the people complained against Moses and said, Why did you bring us out of Egypt to kill us and our children and livestock with thirst? So Moses cried out to the Lord, What shall I do with this people? They are almost ready to stone me. The Lord said to Moses, Go on ahead of the people and take some of the elders of Israel with you. Take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile and go. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock at Horeb. Strike the rock and water will come out of it so that the people may drink. Moses did so in sight of the elders of Israel. He called the place Massa and Meribah because the Israelites quarreled and tested the Lord saying, Is the Lord among us or not? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us recite the psalm responsibly, alternating verses. <clears throat> Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us, let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and, and raise a loud shout to him in songs. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth. And the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Hark not your hearts. As your forebears did in the wilderness, at America, and then on that day in Nazareth, when they tempted me. They put me to the test, though they had seen my works. For you were so long to test us at that generation, and said, This is evil, our way were in their hearts. They do not know my ways. So I swore in my wrath. They shall not enter into my rest. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace through God, peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand, 
and we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we still were sinners, Christ died for us. Much more surely then, now that we have been justified by his blood, will we be saved through him from the wrath of God. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his Son, much more surely, having been reconciled, will we be saved by his life. But more than that, we even boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The sequence in this morning is printed in your program, The Water God Gives Us. said to him, Sir, you have no bucket, and the well is deep. 
Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our ancestor Jacob, who gave us the well, and with his sons and his flocks drank from it? Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. But those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. The water that I will give will become in them a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I may never be thirsty or have to keep coming here to draw water. Jesus said to her, Go, call your husband and come back. The woman answered him, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You are right in saying, I have no husband, for you have had five husbands, and the one you have now is not your husband. What you have said is true. The woman said to him, Sir, I see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you say that the place where people must worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming, and is now here, when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Spirit seeks such as these to worship Him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that Messiah is coming, who is called Christ. When he comes, he will proclaim all things to us. Jesus said to her, I am he, the one who is speaking to you. Just then his disciples came. They were astonished that he was speaking to the woman. But no one said, what you want, or why are you speaking with her? Then the woman left her water jar and went back to the city. She said to the people, come and see a man who told me everything I ever have done. He cannot be the Messiah, can he? They left the city and were on their way to him. Meanwhile, the disciples were urging him, Rabbi, eat something. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you do not know about. So the disciples said to one another, Surely no one has brought him something to eat. Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me, and to complete his work. Do you not say, Four months more, then comes the harvest? But I tell you, look around you, and see how the fields are ripe for harvesting. The reaper is ready, already receiving wages and is gathering fruit for eternal life, so that the sower and reaper may rejoice together. For here the saying holds true, one sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap that for which you did not labor. Others have labored, and you have entered into their labor. Many Samaritans from that city believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I've ever done. So when the Samaritans came to him, they asked him to stay with them. And he stayed there two days. And many more believed because of his word. He said to the woman, It is no longer because of what you said that we believe. For we have heard for ourselves. And we know that this is truly the Savior of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ.
Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Well, that's a long gospel. <laughs> I only made a few slip-ups. Would you believe me if I told you that is the longest sustained conversation in the Bible? Maybe? Yeah, that was pretty long. It's quite unique, isn't it? It's more unique when you realize that Jesus is speaking with whom? A woman. And not just a woman, but a Samaritan woman. What we don't hear is the introduction to this passage where Jesus is leaving Jerusalem and headed back to Galilee, Galilee and insists they must go through Samaria. Now, there's debate among scholars as to whether is this the shortest route to get back home to Galilee. As I said, there's debate. We don't know the road system. We don't know what was the situation in terms of what they used to call brigands, who would sort of like carjack you today. You're walking home and they get you. The point, though, is that whether it's the shortest route, it's the theological route, the truth that is driving this narrative. Jesus is taking them to Samaria, outside the faithful bounds of faithful Jews, uh, Judaism. Now, we don't know an awful lot about the Samaritans. They had a lot of the same traditions and theology as Jews, and there is a lot of speculation on how it actually came into being. But they were not just rivals. We're not talking Red Sox and Yankee rivals. We're talking deep entrenched hatred. For those old enough to remember the 70s, anyone remember the 70s? Come on, I'm looking out there. Yes. You don't count. You don't remember. Jordan doesn't. But back in the 70s, the hatred between Catholics and Protestants in Northern Ireland was so entrenched. But that's not the only example. Think of the hatred that happens along religious lines. Whether or not religion is the motivating force or just the, the cultural medium of the conflict, it's throughout human history conflict today in the Middle East, and even look at India, the conflict between Muslims and Hindus. It happens. It's happening now. And yes, it could be religious, but it's also tribal. You do not associate with anyone outside your tribe. That's disloyalty. Nespa? Yes. Is that how you were raised? No? Okay, I had a touch of that growing up in an Irish Catholic background. There was always a sort of suspicion about Protestants. <laughs> Nonetheless, that tribal loyalty that forms the backdrop of today's story is critical. Because Jesus is crossing barriers He's taking them into unknown territory in the sense of comfort level. He's taking them to associate and converse with people that they're not supposed to, whether it's a woman or a Samaritan. He's crossing that barrier, and it's not just geographical. To make connections to reach out because he is presenting himself as a savior, not just to Jews, but to everyone. 
That is a critical piece. There are so many levels to today's passage. You could spend a month of Sundays just talking about this passage alone. But that is the most important part that speaks to me today. For in the last, well, I'd even say 10 years here in the United States, we're trapped in these tribal communities that tell us we shouldn't speak to those in the other team. You know what I'm talking about. I mean, I was told in good faith recently not to talk to someone because they were on the wrong team. Oh, but Jesus didn't play that way, did he? No. We are called, like Jesus, to be bridge builders, to communicate with those beyond our team, beyond our tribe, because we believe that everyone has a stake in God's community. It's not just those who agree with us, but those who don't. See the connections that Jesus made. And it's funny, you know, over the years, this poor woman, through history, has gotten a bad rap. Five husbands. Yeah. Okay, where does your mind go when you hear that? Yeah. No. First of all, it's gone. Huh? Elizabeth. Elizabeth Taylor. Who? Elizabeth Taylor. Elizabeth Taylor, fair enough. Fair enough. But, but, though times are different, I think Elizabeth Taylor had the upper hand in most of those. <laughs> but in those days, her husbands could have died. And here's the thing, whether we're talking Jews or Samaritans, a woman could not divorce her husband. A husband could divorce a woman. That was, you know? So she is carrying a bad rap here. But it shouldn't come as a surprise that the Gospel of John in particular has to be read and heard on many levels, not just the surface level. What if I told you, and I only recently learned this myself, but what if I told you that Samaria had five overlords? <coughs> who were not the true husband? But who is in fact the true husband? God of Israel. There were five conquering powers. See, this is the, the Gospel of John has so many levels. And the Samaritans were ruled by five different overlords. But their true Lord, their true husband, is Yahweh. And Jesus, you know, who knows what Yahweh means? The short, the shortest possible translation of Yahweh. God. Yeah, but what translation? When Moses asked the burning bush, what's your name? And what do we hear? Right. I am. And what do we hear from Jesus today? I am. This is the first time it's used in John's gospel. I am Yahweh the living water. It is used in John's Gospel repeatedly. I am is answered to many questions. I am the living water. I am the resurrection. I am the life. It's a play on the words. Jesus is identifying himself with the Holy One of Israel and presenting himself as the true spouse of Samaria. Oh, that's just an aside trying to reclaim this poor woman's reputation. There are so many different levels to hear this. But back to the main point, crossing barriers to build relationships is what Jesus is doing. And what does this Samaritan woman tell the people back in the city? 
What is it? What does she say to them? It's a common refrain in John's Gospel. Come and see. Yes, she is truly one of the first disciples in John's Gospel. Come and see. Bringing others to Jesus. When was the last time we had brought others to Jesus? When was the last time we crossed a bridge and a barrier to an unknown territory or a hostile mindset for Jesus' sake? I know, I heard you all say yesterday, that's very good. Very good. No, but it's a reminder of what we're called to do, as Jesus did. So he invites us, like the Samaritan woman, one of those first disciples, to make connections. Invite them. Come and see. Amen. Amen. Let us stand and reaffirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father and the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God. Let us pray to the Holy One. In your mercy, hear us. 
for grace to amend our lives and to further the reign of God, let us pray to the Holy One. In your mercy, hear us. For those who have gone before us in faith and walked the way of the cross, remembering especially Bill Hurst and Kenny Taylor, let us pray to the Holy One. In your mercy, hear us. Gracious God, you provide us with living water in abundance for all to share. Nourish us with this abundance so that we may be streams of living water to those who thirst for you. Through Jesus Christ, the rock of our salvation. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. participating in the governance structure of the church. So we'll be uh, electing officers, and we are an incorporated body. So that means that under the laws of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, we must elect our officers and vestry members every year to effect the business of the church. And so you guys come in. It's not like some churches where the priest does all of that. No, I don't do any of that. That's all you and you. And you. <laughs> so, please come the last Sunday of the month so we can do our annual meeting and move ahead. Um, Tuesday, we continue with the Lenten program. We meet at the Methodist Church at 6.30 for a soup supper, devotion, and discussion. And we're out by 8. Um, what else is going on? What, what am I forgetting? Well, this is the last week we're collecting for relief of the victims of the earthquake in Turkey and Syria. There are envelopes in your pews. And we've also put out envelopes for the Easter flowers because we're halfway, we're almost halfway through Lent. And, you know, take the envelopes home, think about it. And print legibly if you want to remember a loved one. So that means deceased. But if you want to give thanks for someone, that means they're still living. So circle the right box so we don't put them in the wrong category. All right. 
Okay, what else am I missing? Huh? The fair? Springcraft Fair, April 15th. April 15th. Finish your taxes and come to the fair with all the money you make. <laughs> um, so that's that's April 15th. But isn't there some, anything else coming up before? The Easter's before then, right? Yes, Easter Eve. Easter Eve. Easter Eve. So the Easter Eve. Yeah. So for the Easter Eve supper, again, this year, we thought it went so swimmingly well last year. We are going to stick with a fixed menu for the Easter Eve supper and ask that anybody who wishes to make contributions bring something for the dessert table. And we will manage the main course our, amongst ourselves. Yeah. So That went very smoothly last year. Indeed it did. And I uh, just of note, swimmingly is an official Episcopalian adverb. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I say so. All right. Let your lights so shine before others, that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right and good to give you thanks and praise, Almighty God and Everlasting Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son. For in these forty days you lead us into the desert of repentance, that through a pilgrimage of prayer and discipline, we may grow in grace and learn to be your people once again. Through fasting, prayer, and acts of service, you bring us back to your generous heart. Through study of your holy word, you open our eyes to see your presence in the world and free our hands to welcome others into the radiant splendor of your love. As we prepare to celebrate the Easter feast with joyful hearts and minds, we bless you for your mercy <clears throat> and join with saints and angels forever praising you and singing.
Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious. 
precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, the honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Christ, give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Our recessional hymn this morning is number 686, Come Thou Font of Every Blessing.